is our 15th May. <clears throat> and every day Baba talks about in the Murli about the four subjects which we are studying. And so it's very nice to be able to, Baba always talks about studying the Murli. One is listening to the Murli. And then how do I study that Murli with myself? And every soul, whatever Baba gives it the Murli, we each one of us take from Baba's Murli and study with ourselves. And so how do I go about doing that? And so when I listen to Baba's Murli, Baba always says you are studying four subjects. Knowledge, yoga, dharna, meaning inculcation, and then lastly, service. And so based on these four subjects, what is it that I'm picking up as a new point of knowledge, as a new understanding, or a deepening understanding that evolves? And then my yoga with Baba, what points am I picking up? to be able to keep connecting to Baba with various ways so it becomes a little entertaining through different relationships, through different um, practices of stages, through different self-respect points, etc. And then thirdly, the inculcation. So when I have these two, then what is the new inculcation? whether it's a virtue or what is it that Baba is emphasizing in terms of for me to really inculcate that. And to inculcate means when I've gone into a process of knowledge, understood, reflecting with the self, meaning I start to realize. And when I start to realize, it's like going deeper from kind of a surface intellect of understanding into more at a reflection with the self and then be able to come to a realization of that and then be able to come to a point of a decision that this is what needs to happen. So it's as though my next steps are clear what I need to do. And so when I've gone this far, then I'm able to apply it. And when I apply it, meaning use it, that is when actually the knowledge starts to turn into wisdom. So our inculcation is of becoming wise from that level. It's as though it has gone in and it is starting to become like a nature with ourselves. You know, when something becomes natural, we don't have to think, we just be. It's like a sanskar now. So it's natural to us. So what we're embodying out of all of this is the natural perspective of what Baba is teaching me, I the soul, and preparing me. It's like as if he's reshaping my whole personality inside and giving me such wisdom how to then function from that in a natural way. And then that becomes a service by in itself. For example, how I'm being inside. So my drishti, my words, my way of speaking, meaning with a soft tone, my way of moving, interacting. So automatically this does the service. So that's the last subject. But different points are given to us. So using all of that, and then seeing how we're doing in all four subjects. And so Baba always emphasized on all these four aspects. And so how do I study it? And then you start to enjoy the Murali because you, you're always looking out for new awareness, for new understanding, like a new revelation, new enlightening, new deepening, so that you can evolve with new experiences. And these experiences are more like awakening experiences. So the joy starts to come through that, you know. So that's the real joy that emerges for us. It's not like, oh, 
I'm happy because of this, that, and then what happens to our happiness? So it's an evolving happiness emerging from this study. So today is Morley. Baba saying, sweet children, your faces are now towards heaven. So our internal face is towards heaven. You are stepping away from the shores of hell and going to heaven. So again, checking internally, because everything is internal. Have I left the shore to step inside? Shore meaning our old self, and then connecting towards the heaven where I'm preparing to go. Therefore, this is why he's telling us, this is why, remove your intellect's yoga from hell. Everything of old Iron Age. Question, what is the highest and most subtle destination? Right? We have destination. So what is that subtle destination? And then, of course, who can reach it? Right? We can. We are all in a race. We all start. But then what happens? Some reach past. Some still are there kind of going, some have slowed down, some are stuck because they're not clear of their next steps, where they're going. So it's also a journey towards the destination. But again, what is that that I'm kind of taking from Baba's Murli and fueling myself? It's like powering myself to walk on that towards the destination. And what is getting distracted, I also need to realize that from the old patterns so that I'm aware that this will happen. But the more I become realized, then I know what I'm to do, what I have to do. So really both, we can't just have one side. We need to be aware of the other so that we get motivated. So that's why Baba always talks about both sides. So answer, you children turn your faces to heaven. And Maya turns your faces towards hell. So this kind of game goes on. She brings many storms. And so you have to overcome all of those storms. So each one's storms are different because they're inside us, sitting in our habits and sanskars. And that's why we feel those storms. And I have to face those storms by keeping my awareness of the heaven, where I want to go as destination. And so whatever storms I need to face, now how am I taking power from Baba to be able to overcome these storms? So everyone's storms will be different. So Baba says, this is your subtle destination. And so Baba says, in order to reach your destination. Now, what would be some of those obstacles? He, of course, highlights. And in today's Murli, he is highlighting that you have to become destroyers of attachment because how they get in the way as a storm so on the basis of your faith and courage you can overcome this so checking our level of faith and courage to begin with and then to know that i have to conquer attachment that's going to come up as a storm and how they come up, it's very interesting. You can check what happens. So Baba says, on the basis of your faith and courage, you can overcome this. So why living amongst people who indulge in vice, your effort is to become a swan, free 
from vices. So whatever may be around, but what is my aim to become a swan? And then the song that was played, this is the battle of the weak with the powerful. So this is a story actually of a flame, you know, small flame and the storms. So on one hand, we are like small flames, but then the storms that we experience, imagine small is so tiny. And you wonder where is lots of storms come. So that is the battle. So really, it's an internal battle of us with the Maya. Om Shanti. Children who are sensible understand the meaning of this song very well. Storms only come to those whose intellect's yoga is facing the land of peace and heaven. So Maya recognizes we are facing this. This is what we want. This is what we desire. And so Maya doesn't want that inside. So it comes up to bring storms. So the father is now turning your faces to heaven on the path of ignorance to your faces turn away from your old home. And you remember your new home. This is like practical example when you are building a new home. And so Baba says, you wonder when it will be ready. So you children are aware when your heaven is to be established so that you can then go to the land of happiness. Right? We want everything to finish so we could go. And so everyone, therefore, everyone has to leave this land of sorrow. It's not like recreating something in the world of sorrow at a physical level. And that's why Baha says what we're doing whilst in this land, we're recreating inside. And then the external new world will come for us, which will be called the land of happiness. And so the father explains to all human beings of the whole world, whole world. He says, children, the gates of heaven are now opening. Your intellect's yoga should now be towards heaven. So in a way for us, the gate is opened, right? Stepping into confluence age is a gate. It's our first birth. So it's a gate we've entered to have beautiful experiences and left the shore of the Iron Age. Those who go to heaven are called pure, whereas those who are in hell are called impure. While living at home with your families, your intellect's yoga should be with heaven. For example, if the father's intellects Excuse me. If the father's intellect's yoga is with heaven, but the child's intellect has, his, has yoga with hell, how would it be possible for them to live in the one home? So, again, storms, swarms, and stalks cannot live together it would be very difficult so those whose intellects have yoga with the five vices are the ones who go to hell so you see it's a question of yoga now between the two it's a choice where do i go with it so if i go to towards the vices then we will go to the hell Whereas you are the ones who go to heaven. So the two cannot live together. The destination is very high. So we have to know what is to come in between as we reach heaven. 
But then Baba gives us everything we need to know, to be equipped, to manage. So we have to also watch out for those things. So Baba says the destination is very high when a father sees that the faces of his children are towards hell, that they cannot stop going towards hell. What should he do? Now he's concerned. What should he do? There would definitely be quarreling in the home. The children would ask, what kind of knowledge is this that says, I cannot get married? And so there are many like this who live in a household where the faces of their children are towards hell. They want to go to hell, even though their father says, do not keep your intellect's yoga with hell. However, they still do not listen to their father, not locally speaking. So what should he do then? You know, it's so interesting. Baba's taking a very practical, physical example of a parents or father and the children. Now imagine us as children and that father telling us. So are we listening? How much are we listening? How much are we obeying? So that is the whole question behind this. So Baba says, what should he do then? Your stage needs to be that of a destroyer of attachment. So look at the advice Baba is giving us. So all of this knowledge is in your souls. The soul of the father says, I created him, but he doesn't even listen to me. Even when some become Brahmins, their intellects still go towards hell. They go into the extreme depths of hell. Baba says, it has been explained to you children that this is the court of the ocean of knowledge. On the path of devotion, the court of Indra has been remembered. No, look at the, the two connections. Baba is saying many, so court of Indra has been remembered. And the way it shows that Indra was the king of all the deities. And his kingdom was up because the deities are shown up. So how were they living? So they had fairies, they call them fairies. In Hindi, they call them paris. And what they would do is dance and entertain Indra God. And how are we to understand that and use that memorial? Because it's a memorial. It's our memorial. But how do we apply it now, application? So Baba says, Many names, these are different names of the uh, paris or angels, if you like, as Pokraj Pari means it's a stone, like a value of it, like topaz or Nilam Puri, meaning zephyr, and Manik Puri, meaning ruby. So they're all jewels, have been given. So these are variety names of the angels or paris. But what is one thing they do commonly? They perform the dance. So there they show dancing physically. But here we have become Paris and we dance the dance of knowledge. You know, that's why when people dance, there is a kind of joy they experience, isn't it? And so this is where Baba says, when you dance with the knowledge, then automatically there is a joy inside. So you're dancing with the jewels of knowledge. So that is how we are imbibing. And God Indra is, of course, Baba. So Baba says there are various types of fairies. 
they have to remain so again what is the condition now to be able to do that to be able to dance they have to remain pure and so anyone who brings someone impure here will be punished so when actually when baba comes and we all fairies go and enjoy being in the presence of baba baba says if you bring anyone impure then they will be punished but not only they you bring them so some consequences also come to you this is why he makes it very clear you need to be very pure the destination here is very high this is why the tree this is why our brahmin tree doesn't grow very quickly no one knows the knowledge that the father gives this knowledge is not mentioned in the scriptures because they only have a little faith maya just has to little faith maya just has to slap them once to make them fall down you know it's like uh, people who age and their body bones become frickle the the strength has gone and so what happens they become very fragile and then little thing little whatever they fall and then they have fractures variety of fractures ankles hips whatever so imagine that experience so you know people say why aren't you careful but they are careful but because the bones have become frackle and no strength they cannot hold themselves so that is external now imagine the inner state of the soul that's why the soul has to be strengthened we have to exercise and give right nutrition to be able to grow strong so we have to be opposite now from the physical so baba says there are storms a little flame is blown out by just one gust of a snow storm when they see others indulging in vice they too fall because you feel pulled inspired so you get pulled so you have to be very wise to understand all of these things that's why baba says sometimes be careful of company be careful of who is inspiring and where you are getting your inspiration no it could affect you so baba says it is sung innocent ones were assaulted the father explains children lust is your greatest enemy and therefore you should baba is using a very strong word no you should hate it hate it so baba inspires you to detest it very much it wasn't like this previously so again we have to understand the extremity wasn't like this therefore because it has um become like that now so what is the condition hell only exists now so baba is giving example draupadi is calling for help refers to this time even though it has been explained to you so clearly this doesn't sit in your intellects so now looking at the time time we started to enjoy, but it wasn't too bad it was within a system within the law and everything indulgence became because that became the system in order to produce children but not go and take pleasure but the vice today is beyond just birth and giving birth but it has become a pleasure today and that's why baba says this vice has created a home inside and tr brought trouble to us 
assaulted us, insulted us, took away our power and strength, became enslaved, so many things, and sorrow, variety form of sorrow. So Baba says, this is why he's giving example, that ultimately, look who Draupati was, and even then, nobody could save her, protect her, her very own. Look at the state she was in. And so Baba says, this picture, picture of the cycle, is very good. The gateway to heaven, right? From Iron Age to Confluence Age. People can understand very clearly from the picture of the cycle. They cannot understand as much from the picture of the ladder. as they can from this one, the picture of the cycle. So day by day, you receive corrections. The father says today, today, I give you completely new directions. You cannot receive all the directions together at the beginning. It means when he came, he doesn't lay out everything for us. So Baba says, just look what the world is like now. There's so much sorrow within it. They have so much attachment to their children. If a child dies, they go completely crazy. There's limitless sorrow. It isn't that if they are wealthy they are happy again you know sometimes how we, how do we understand happiness sorrow this whole kind of contrast so baba sometimes takes us a little bit in comp in comparison and then to really look back and check so he says for example it isn't that you have wealth that you are happy there are still many types of illness they simply lie in a hospital the poor stay in the general wards so the difference is wealthy can afford private wards but the poor cannot afford private wards so they are in the general wards but they're all in the same hospital whereas the wealthy have a special room to themselves However, however, the wealthy also experience the same pain and sorrow that the poor do. So if somebody has some tummy problem, wealthy has problem, poor has problem. Pain is the same. No difference between wealthy and poor. The only thing is that the care, the space, comfort, wealth brings. So common thing here is the illness. So Baba says, it is just that they have a better room and are looked after better. You children know that the father is now teaching you. The father has taught you many times before. So again, ultimate is the sicknesses. And so how do we free ourselves from variety of sicknesses? So that's where the biggest challenge is. How many others do I teach? If, Baba says, if you do not teach others what status would you claim so here's one teach yourself be that's one student that you yourself are teaching yourself at least do that much so you're teaching one yourself check your chart every night and ask yourself did i cause anyone sorrow today Srimad direction says do not cause anyone sorrow. That means the self. But show the path 
to everyone. Those who belong to our clan will very quickly be touched by this knowledge. A golden vessel is needed to hold this nectar. It is said that only a golden vessel can hold the milk of a lioness. Right? So we're getting the milk from God, the lioness. Look at the strength. So what kind of intellect we have to keep golden to hold it. Otherwise it doesn't stay. Knowledge doesn't stay in the intellect. A golden vessel is needed to hold this nectar. It is said that only a golden vessel can hold the milk of a lioness. So this is because the milk she gives is very rich and nourishing. Now, these days people can't take rich milk and nourishing milk, you know, so they go for lactose milk or 2%, 1%, zero milk. Strength is diluted. So again, how do we strengthen our immune system that we can take the rich milk and the nourishment from God? A lioness too has a lot of attachment to her children. She would instantly leap up if she sees anyone because she thinks that they might kill her cubs. Here too, there are many who have a lot of attachment to their husbands and children. You children know that the gates of heaven are now opening. This is written very clearly in the picture of Krishna. The gates of heaven will open after this war. So the actual gate versus this. So look at the other side of the gate. From confluence, the golden age will open. So war has to happen. And here, from iron age to confluence age, we've entered this gate. So again, understanding the two gates. So Baba says the gates of heaven will open after this war. There will be very few people there. Everyone else will remain in the land of liberation. A great deal of punishment will have to be experienced. They will see visions of all the sins they have committed in every birth and experience punishment for them. Then they receive a status worth a few pennies. Because they don't stay in remembrance, their sins are not absolved. So you see, we have to face our own sins that we've done. That comes as a storm in our mind. And it also comes as a situation out there. So knowing I have to face, so now how am I going to face it? Why I need to face it? I don't need to fight with it, but I have to accept it and know rightfully how to deal with it. So that is where I get that wisdom from Baba. So Baba says there are many children who even miss hearing the morally. Many children remain careless about this. They think, what does it matter if I don't study it? I have already achieved everything, everything achieved. So have we completely conquered the vices, the subtle vices? So that is the challenge, not achieved at physical level. So Ba says, they don't care about the morally. There are many who are body conscious in this way. They only create a loss for themselves. Baba knows this. Therefore, when you come here, he asks you, how many murlis you have not heard? How could you know if there are some very good points in them, right? If we didn't hear, we would have missed it. So there are many points every day, you know, and we don't know which point could strike us. So there are many like that who go to a center, but who neither have knowledge nor dharna. 
how could you receive a status if you don't follow Srimad? You will never claim a status by defaming the true father and the true teacher. Not everyone can become a king. Subjects still have to be created. So status is number wise. Everything depends on remembrance. Can you not remember the father from whom you receive the kingdom of the whole world? If it is not in your fortune, what effort would you then make? The father says it is only through the pilgrimage of remembrance that your sins can be burnt away. Now we hear this point every day, but then what we have to learn? Remembrance, yes, but what type of remembrance? Burning, what am I burning every day? What is getting burnt? Therefore, you have to make effort. Baba does not say, do not eat or drink. This is not hot yoga. While walking and moving around and doing everything else, just stay in remembrance of Baba in the same way as a lover remembers her beloved. They have love for their names and forms. No met, Baba says, no one knows how Lakshmi and Narayan became the masters of the world. So you see, Mama Baba did everything at a physical level too. They didn't just sit all day for yoga. We are karma yogi. So to integrate in every action, this yoga. So how do I learn to have yoga in this? That means it's the intellect my hand is doing, but who am I doing it for? Why am I doing it? I have to be clear. Then nobody else can come in the mind and intellect. And then I do it with that love of Baba. And so Baba says, so Baba would come more. And so Baba says, no one knows how Lakshmi Narayan became the masters of the world. You say that it was just a matter of yesterday when they used to rule. However, people mention hundreds of thousands of years. And so Maya has made the intellects of people completely like stone. Even having stone intellects, you are now becoming those with divine intellects. So this is the transformation. We internally using, based on four subjects, transforming. So there is a temple to the Lord of Divinity. However, no one knows who he is. Human beings are in absolute darkness. The Father now explains very good things to you. Then it depends on the intellect of each one. There's only the one who teaches, but there will be many who come here to study. And so in every street, you will have a school with a board that says, Gateway to Heaven. Not a single human being understands that they are in hell. The Father explains, they are all worshippers. Those who are worthy of worship can only exist in the golden age, whereas worshippers exist in the iron age. So we are not worship worthy, but we are not worshippers. So what are we doing? Those who are worthy of worship can only exist in golden age. So Baba says, people believe that God, God is worthy of worship and that he then becomes a worshiper. So they chant, only you are God and only you perform these wonderful acts. You are God and we too are God. They do not understand anything. This is the kingdom of Ravan. What were you and what are you now becoming? 
You children should have a lot of intoxication. The father says, simply remember me alone and you will become pure, charitable souls. So you see our own acts would make us charitable. The father shows you children ways to become pure, charitable souls. He says, children, it is now the end of the old world. I have now come here to you directly. You now have to make the final donation. Therefore, so what is final donation? Therefore, surrender everything completely and say, Baba, all of this is yours. The Father inspires you to donate. So, why he inspires us? So that your future can be created. You know, today is a great fear taking over. And fears are usually about future. And look what Baba is saying to us. How do we safeguard our future? So inspiring us to donate. People donate and perform charity in the name of God. However, that is indirect. They receive the fruit of that in their next birth. And that too is fixed in the drama. I have now come here directly. So whatever you do now, you will receive the return of that multi-million fold. There is no question of making donations or performing charity, etc. in the golden age. No. So now, but that is the reward of this donation now that is done. So if someone here, Baba says, if someone here has money, Baba says, Acha, go and open a center. Go and create an exhibition. If someone is poor, Baba says, Acha, just put up a boat outside your home that says, Gateway to heaven. There is heaven and hell. Now, we don't have to go into detailed explanation of real heaven and hell, but how we live in our home. The experience of what heaven is like. Such pure vibrations in the home, pure food is cooked, Baba's presence we invoke. The whole surrounding that we create in our homes is giving experience of heaven, not hell. So Baba says, so even everybody can do this, even poorly. So Baba says, this is heaven and this is hell at present. You are residents of hell. No one else knows this. If someone has gone to heaven, why do they then call him back into hell? No one in heaven will say that so-and-so has gone to heaven. Right? So even if somebody die in the family, the atmosphere is still heavenly. So people would wonder, oh, how come the atmosphere is like this? Nobody's crying. Nobody's sad. It doesn't seem like hell. Again, how are we creating experience of happiness for them? Meaning hell, not happiness, but more like heavenly experience where there is no sorrow because there is no attachment to the person died. So these are services. No one in heaven will say that so and so has gone to heaven. He would already be in heaven anyway. We do traffic control now. Seven okay. o'clock. Yeah. Okay. So think about these things as you reflect with yourself. Wow. 
Baba was inspiring us <clears throat> to how being our home, being the experience of heaven, and those who come, we can share that if somebody has gone to heaven, then why are you calling them in hell and experiencing sorrow? So making them realize that it's their attachment. They are gone happily in heaven. But you who are here experiencing sorrow. And so how are you going to cope with that sorrow in yourself? So again, through our inspiration, vibration, strength of that true happiness, we can share. So Baba is saying, no one in heaven will say that so and so has gone to heaven. He would already be in heaven anyway. And therefore, he would take rebirth in heaven. Here, everyone has to take rebirth in hell. And so only you can explain these things. And so God speaks constantly, remember me alone. He is the purifier. He says, remember me alone and you will become worthy of worship from a worshiper. It's all about becoming worthy through remembrance and acts of charity. 
although everyone in heaven is happy, the status there is still number wise. The destination is very high. You Kumaris should have a lot of enthusiasm for doing service and explaining to everyone that you are making Bharat into heaven. A Kumari is one who uplifts 21 generations. This means she can uplift others for 21 births. So Kumaris, if you are there, this is the challenge Baba gives us. Acha to the sweetest, beloved, long lost, and now found children, love, remembrance, and good morning from the mother, the father, Bab Dada. The spiritual father says namaste to the spiritual, to the spiritual children. children. And spiritual, the spiritual children, children says say namaste, namaste to the spiritual, to the spiritual father. father. So essence... So think for yourself what the essence would have been for you. So the main points usually get highlighted in the essence. You can take from that, reflect, and expand, go deep into it. Or choose other points connecting to you. So as the Morley essence, one, this old world is now to end. The Father has come here directly. Therefore, completely surrender yourself and say, Baba, all of this belongs to you. By using this method, this is a method, you will become a pure, charitable soul. Two, never miss a murli. Do not become careless about hearing a murli. Do not think. Observe your thoughts, thinking when it happens. What does it matter? If I don't study a murli, no? today it doesn't matter if I don't study. I have already achieved everything or I've heard many movies. No. That is body conscious. So it's like a body conscious speaking. So definitely study the morning. I mean, I know I used to get those thoughts when I used to, when I started my journey. And I would say, you know, every day is like same, same points. And then, I continue to listen. Somehow, I used to just listen. And now what I saw is a difference. That I started to understand the depth. Like I started to go deeper into those very same things Baba talks about. And then what I found that, that superficial intellect who listened and understood at that level. And then of course comes the ego in it. Oh, I know it all. So we, we start feeling that level of body consciousness. But then we kind of go deeper as we listen to Baba. Then we see another level happening. We start going deeper. It's like as if discovery starts to happen. The depth starts to take place. It's like aha moments start to come. And we get the, such a deep revelations. And it's like the change that is happening within us through that and when that is happening then the joy that emerges so it's all very connected in the way we are evolving and that's why Baba's Murli for us is not the same every day there's always something something new as a revelation so that's why you enjoy the Murli so Baba is saying you know it's like a trigger point also so wherever Baba is flowing it's like we flow with that and then what triggers us as a newness. So this is how it works. And so Baba says, oops, oh no. Did I disconnect? Oh no. Oh 
Oh gosh, what did I do? To accept that. Oh, did I disconnect you? No, you can okay. hear me. I don't know what happened. No, like we are sending you, so you can just turn off your camera. That's only, you have to accept it. Only camera part. Well, I don't know where camera part is now. It's okay, you can just go on. Okay, so anyways, um, so that was the main Murli point. I mean, from my um, experience. And the blessing is, may you be a master bestower of support for all by being a victorious jewel on the basis of faith may you be a master bestower of support for all by being a victorious jewel on the basis of faith because children who have faith in the intellect are victorious they constantly dance with happiness they do not speak about their victory, but because of being victorious, they increase the courage in others. They do not try to make anyone look small, but they become master bestowers of support, the same as the Father. That is, they uplift them from down below meaning they feel down but what you're doing is uplifting them up they always remain far from any waste they always remain <coughs> They always remain far from any waste. To step away from waste is to be victorious. To step away from waste is to be victorious. Such victorious children become master bestowers of support for everyone slogan only those who serve with their selflessness and stage that is free from any sins are embodiments of success only those who serve with their selflessness and stage that is fixed that is free from any sins are embodiments of success you can still hear me hello can hear you everybody can keep your camera on please and wave when she asks you okay i don't know what happened i'm little new to this so next time i won't touch anything <laughs> so because interruptions come using the phone anyhow so this was Baba's Murli today Umar and the blessing, uh, uh, Bolo. Okay. You, you finish the blessing then. Okay. Yeah, I actually finished the blessing, but the interesting part that it connects us to the Murli today, because Baba said your destination is very high because we have to become like golden aged, create a golden aged vessel. Mm -hmm. That's our destination. How to keep it also, but how to maintain that vessel. And then Baba said to us today that we have to face many things because of the past sins in us. And one of them, he mentioned deep attachment. And so how do we become victorious over the storms, variety of storms that come in our way, internal storms through Maya. And it's only our faith in Baba. And so taking the strength and courage from Baba that will allow us to be victorious. Like he said, you will not get into duality 
in the in the circumstances that we may be living in like for example he said stork and storm um, swan and so supposing i'm a swan and others around me are like stork how do i be with them and so not to engage in in getting into a kind of friction or conflict but rather stepping inside and knowing where where you are at and using the rightful wisdom to stay victorious and not get affected by their insults or uh, defamation if you like or whatever it is that they bringing to you in that moment but rather check what they're saying so that they they're actually helping you to look at some of the things that they may be seeing in you and you may not be able to see it so even through their eye you can pick up this and use it as an opportunity to to really work on yourself because it's our it internal work that we have to do to keep coming out of this so called sins freeing ourselves from the sin and that's why bhagavad says remember me while doing everything so making god our world doing everything keeping him as a focus and then however the external world is it's it's not as important but because we give too much importance to the external then that's where we forget who truly we are as brahmins and we also forget baba then maya takes over completely so i just wanted to share that and i'm also watching the time i know there is a next session but is there anyone that would like to yeah, either share or ask there is a question a uh, question the sisters ask that a uh, little bit explain about destroyer of attachment and uh, like nastamoha yes yeah, so like baba said what is going to get in our way as a storm is this attachment now how do we first of all recognize this attachment so take maybe an hour or two any situation that happened and then observe what is happening with those people and what how your thoughts are being created and what is the pain or sorrow or um, extra concern i call it extra concern one is concern is okay but when you start having extra concern right there you realize wait a minute this is attachment coming through and making me have extra thoughts so yes i have concern i care i do what i need to do and then i have to be restful meaning become patient keep the faith and whatever will be the result i don't have to even have attachment to the result because if i wait for result then again if something doesn't happen then again i get upset so this cycle continues so again how we bringing the knowledge now into the whole play so this is where bas is do what you have to do care for someone yes you be concerned but when i do extra now that means why am i doing extra it's attachment that's making me do that so you can think about these things so when you start becoming observant in you in various areas of your life that's when you will even as an experiment you do you don't get to know everything but as an experiment and especially when different situations come to you take it as a like a test paper for you or a, or or kind of a research if you like not even test paper but like a research moment okay what am i researching i'm researching to see what level of attachment there is or what kind of attachment is there so the kind of thoughts i'm having you know every maybe half hour one hour i don't know go back because we lose our thoughts we forget them so if you do every one hour and just reflect back and observe what kind of thoughts you had because then we could remember them and jot it down jot it down and then reflect back later to say look throughout these were the thoughts that came in now were they right thoughts where did they emerge from was it connected to body consciousness and so it it's like a research we have to do with ourselves this is called studying with ourselves so it's not something immediate that we can learn about it or know about it but as we discover we start seeing our subtlest traits of those attachments
So take it up as an experiment. What are some of the immediate things where you feel your attachment is, or important rather? Say, what is important to you in your life? In terms of things, people, body, um, you know, um, even ideas, ways. Some people are very attached to their ways. It has to be this way, it has to be that way. So all of this, if you put yourself in a test for a day, at least to some extent you will come to know where you are pulled, drawn over thoughts, which Baba calls waste thoughts. So victorious or through faith, faith. So ultimate is all of this I reflect, I hold in faith, and I will be able to conquer the attachment. So I have to be a little introverted, in, introspective, they call it. When I'm internally focused, then I can inspect it. But if I'm constantly extroverted, means externally inspecting things outside, then I'm far away from my internal inspection. And this is where I, I don't recognize and I'm blinded. Uma Bin, now you can guide meditation. Okay. So just straighten up yourself, sit straight so energy flows properly. We become alert and active. Take a deep breath and become aware of yourself seated as a Raj Yogi seated on your beautiful immortal throne within this temple, the body. And I, the soul, the special jewel of Baba's eyes, Baba's heart. I make Baba my entire world. And I check today, has Baba truly become my entire world? What is missing still that I'm holding on to the old world? And as I get pulled towards Baba's world, my surrendering becomes easy because I know I have Baba who is almighty, who bestows me the power of courage, faith, because he is absolute truth. And I absolutely trust his words, his directions that he gives to me as a friend. For my own benefit, for my own upliftment. Even if I feel down, Baba is the only one who knows to uplift me. And he uplifts me to my highest. And Baba gives me every day my true self-respect. And I sit myself all day on that seat and rule my inner kingdom through my mind, intellect and sense cars. And ultimately through the senses of this body which is the temple. 
Baba's making me a charitable soul. How I see someone through my eyes, even that is an act of charity. How I listen from inside to someone outside and only focusing on uplifting them in a true way. That is charity. I speak words that are uplifting for another. That is a charity. And so everything I do can be a charity. And this is how I accumulate my account of charity for future and my future is in my hands now in the way I perform through Baba's help. And I regain my inner strength and I transform from a Raj Yogi to a real Raja, the Sovereign. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Oma Ben, it was very nice. Baba's early explanation. And uh, Shukriya and we can all we with say thank you, Baba, with one hand. And uh, soon we can you can come back. Yes, and oh, I would also yeah. like to thank you for this opportunity. And I'm very, very grateful. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Have a wonderful, happy, joyous day. Mm. Okay, we can sit in meditations and then afterwards Hindi Murli will begin soon too. Okay, Gita Ben Om Shanti, everyone Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Keep everyone's camera on and just let's we meditate together